The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar around building and implementing a safe return to work strategy. We appreciate everyone joining us today and are excited about the content that we've prepared. We've been a part of a number of these sessions around COVID and different strategies that employers are taking, and our goal for today is twofold. One's to highlight what we're hearing from our customers and what we're seeing in the marketplace as it pertains to work from home strategies, return to work strategies in the age of COVID. And two, to connect that feedback and those strategies to the technology that's been created or adapted to allow employers to execute on the strategies and get their employees back to work. We're joined by an all-star group today from ADP, including Doug Plord. Doug is the Director of Sales and Learning Delivery for ADP. Ari Ozer, Ari is the Vice President of Products and ADP Ventures Marketing. And Kristen Cadillac is a Senior HCM Business Consultant. So stated another way, Doug educates and empowers the internal ADP team to help their customers. Ari educates and empowers employers who may be considering HR technology and Kristen educates and empowers organizations that want to evaluate ADP. Uh, my name is Nathan Triplett. I lead our sales practice here at SWK around HCM. Um, and again, we expect and hope you will find value from today's presentation. Um, after the demonstration that Kristen runs for us today, we'll have a Q&A session. Uh, I will be monitoring the chat box throughout, so feel free to submit questions anytime you have them. And with that, I'll turn it over to Doug and the team at ADP to get us started. Nathan, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Welcome, everybody. It's good to have you on the call. My name is Doug Floyd. I'm going to talk very little because I really want to get you to the experts as quickly as possible. So for today, what we're going to go through is a little bit about what we've heard from our clients in the market and then how ADP has reacted and kind of refocused based on these times that are, you know, I hate saying the word unpre unprecedented, but that's kind of where we're at right now, where we're six months into this uh, a pandemic that's truly unprecedented for times like these. Then we're gonna go through the considerations and best practices for businesses that are going back to the workplace. After that, Ari's gonna go through a quick run through of the technology and the product changes that were required a result of responding to the COVID-19 situation. And then we're gonna hand it off to Kristen Cadillac, who's gonna walk through a, a really awesome demo of our new return to workplace features. So when I think about it, I just want to start with this and say thank you. And let's start with what we've heard from our client base and the market in general and how that has informed our actions since the pandemic began this earlier this year. Ari, my friend, it's good to have you here. Talk to me a little bit about this and how we're reacting and refocusing. Yeah, you bet. Thanks a bunch, Doug, for the intro and, and really excited to be with everyone here today. So we're gonna walk you through a bunch of bunch of stats and research and what we've heard from the market and how we've really organized around um, two main areas, right? So, um, and that's React and, and, and Refocus. And just like a lot of other businesses, um, we too were faced with new needs from our clients um, along with, um, uh, how we as a business needed to operate, right? So being agile and nimble has been a huge part of our response so that we can deliver at the pace of change that's that's needed to, to navigate, as as you said, Doug, these, these uncharted waters. And so from the start, we really focus on how we can adapt and adjust, adjust workflows and deliver new functionality um, to our clients as, as they needed it. And we've also repurposed our own associates, like how many other businesses out there have done too, so that we can tackle these, these complex new problems and address questions coming in from clients. Um, and a lot of, we've had a lot of questions coming in from clients. And so we're gonna start, we're gonna talk about how we reacted and then, and then refocus and how we were helping our clients with that along the way. We're gonna start first with React. Um, and this is where we kind of quickly work to understand new legislation, programs, compliance needs, um, and adapted our systems. And, First up, so we, we surveyed businesses um, to really understand their, their concerns and it's a help inform our priorities for reacting, right? And so we, we've conducted market research with employers um, and asked them where they, they needed help and found that their concerns centered really around three key areas. So business continuity, compliance, and employee health and financial wellness. Um, in terms of business continuity, as expected, employers told us their top concern is keeping their businesses running 
um, supporting their employees and their clients. And 78% and of those employers reported that it's gonna take about six months or longer for their revenue to return to pre-COVID-19 levels. Um, in terms of compliance, 68% of employers said that they need more guidance on government relief programs. So these are programs like direct government monetary assistance, um, low interest business loans, enhanced employment, unemployment assistance, and tax relief and deferral. So these, these are really key things. And employers are also worried about their employees' health and financial wellness. So they've, they've asked us for guidance on how to appropriately address employee health concerns and questions about personal finances and job security. Um, so as the world of work shifted, um, so, so did we, and we tapped a lot of the in-house experts that we have to create timely, valuable content and guidance to, to address these concerns. Um, and so armed with the feedback from those employers, we set out to deliver support and really marshal the, the, and anticipate the resources that we would need moving forward. So under business continuity, um, we've worked to provide reports in our systems and, and support for employers looking to apply for these essential business loans and the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act or the CARES, CARES Act. Um, as well as tips for maintaining organization, organizational agility and business resiliency that's, that's necessary in these uncertain times. For compliance, our, our legal team working in tandem with our government relations people um, read through the, the hundreds of pages of, of legislation um, and, and together they interpreted the measures and provided employers with um, easier to understand and actionable guidance on topics, including state and local legislation, um, the, the Families First Coronavirus Response Act, so the FFRCA, um, expanded FML leave and, and furlough policies. Um, we also focused on the financial assistance programs, especially in the early days of the, pan, of the PPP, um, uh, early days of, of, of the pandemic, like the Paycheck Protection Program and how to apply and qualify for those programs. And now the focus has really pivoted more um, on reporting to track loan forgiveness, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Um, in terms of employee and financial wellness, um, a lot of information and content that, that we've been publishing, we're gonna walk through some of that um, in a little bit in terms of, of where to find that, that information. Um, and Doug is gonna kind of walk through some of that now. Well, it's interesting, Ari, right? Like, cause I'm thinking about all the things that you're saying and I keep thinking about the next normal. And I was talking to my daughter the other night and my daughter's a paraprofessional at, the lo at one of the uh, local school systems here in Connecticut. And to hear about every single change that they've had to make in an elementary school, like hundreds of changes over the past three months to get ready for a, a you know, virtual and in-person environment, a hybrid, if you will. Like, I can't even imagine what companies are going through right now because everything is changing, not just like even on a weekly basis, but like on a daily basis. So how are companies and how are we able to kind of help companies navigate through all this? Yeah, and so this is, this is where Doug, we've, we've provide a good deal of resources, both online and then also in day-to-day in -day conversations, right? So we've got some resources online, like the Employer Preparedness Toolkit, which you can find at adp.com slash COVID-19. You can see the URL there up on, on the slide. Um, the PPP program microsite, so that's adp.com slash PPP. Um, and there's other links within those sites as well where you can get to things like Ion Washington, which is a, a compliance website. And then within our products too. So um, you know, if, if you use an, an ADP product, when you log in, you can get links and content to valuable information. Um, and then also there's been, um, you know, webinars have been another channel since we can't do a lot in person now, obviously, that um, we've been looking to deliver a lot of this content um, through that channel, including a virtual summit that we did back um, in, in, in June. And then we've been rolling out updates to that as well. So, you know, a lot of this stuff, obviously online, um, but, but deep information. And, and Doug, you know, to your point, there's a lot of um, changes that have to be kept up with. 
The, the next phase too, so, the, so we spoke about kind of that, that reaction phase. The refocus is the second phase that, that we've now entered, right? So um, businesses were kind of just trying to understand the situation. And now in this refocus phase is where um, we're, it's all about extending assistance to help with getting back to work um, the right way with things like best practices for workplace safety, workforce management, and then also new tools for returning workers um, to the physical workplace, which we're going to show later um, with with Kristen. And you know, and going back to some some data again too, and and the outreach that that our team um, at the ADP Research Institute has has done as we've shifted to refocus. We did another round of research this summer to understand how employers are planning to adapt to um, the changes brought on, right? Um, and so we asked both small and mid-sized businesses and, and also enterprise size organizations, and there's some interesting differences in there too. Um, so we saw that about half of small businesses are making adjustments to their business model, while 84% of large businesses are, are changing their business models and and when looking at how organizations are shifting their business models to remain nimble the biggest shift is seen in changing the way that they deliver their products or services to the the market and that was the highest response for both smbs and and large organizations it's also interesting to note that um, it was more common for the larger organizations to redeploy employees to different tasks um, than before expand the product and services they offer, and then even change to a new primary product or service offering. So it's going to be fascinating to see how these data points change over time um, as the relationship between um, customers um, potentially changes. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about those best practices um, in a bit. And in terms of what we're hearing as businesses refocus, we're seeing several trends playing out. Um, since customer demand, traditional supply chains and, and distribution are experiencing disruption, many companies are changing their business models to find new customers or meet the needs of their existing customers in, in new and different ways. Um, we're also seeing that the labor market is obviously changing dramatically. So from, from layoffs and furloughs and leaves, um, that are so severely impacting categories like travel, hospitality, and, and dining um, to increase demand and hiring in other categories like delivery services and healthcare. Um, so extremely um, fascinating what's, what's happening there and different challenges across different categories. There's also new ways that are required to manage people on leave, um, provide flexible work arrangements and address liability risks. And these have employers seeking more guidance and, and best practices. And then of course, figuring out how to handle worker re-entry into workplaces. And it's stuff that, that we at ADP are working on um, and we're using, we're personally using some of the tools that we've developed to bring our own associates back into the workplaces in the right way so that our people feel confident and, and safe. Um, and then also looking at creating new workplaces. And these are of course, obviously, um, you know, usually remote working or even work workspace sharing. And so all of this really ladders back to being agile and ready to adapt. Um, and every company's aspired for that in the past, but now it's really proving um, to be an, an imperative. You know, Ari, when I think about it, I, I always go back to this analogy in my head of the last time I bought a home computer, which was a while ago. But the second you buy the home computer and you take it out of Best Buy or PC Richard, it's out of date, right? Like I feel like so much is happening so quickly that we have a there's a there's an issue out there that it could be that we're getting to information and maybe it's already outdated. Not the ones that you're giving me today, but maybe three months down the road, three weeks down the road, three days down the road, you want more information. So as businesses either continue to press ahead or just start the reemerging. We're aggregating all this information, the assessments and the best practice guides, and you can find all of those at adp.com slash forward. So that's adp.com slash forward. So this will be continued to be updated as more trends and practices are made available. So, I mean, I would go there early and often. All right, let's go to the next piece because I think this is really important, right? When we start looking at, you know, how can we prepare? How can businesses prepare? 
and plan is they're helping the business return to the workplace. There's so many different considerations and everything going on. And I got to tell you, Ari, there's not, there's only one thing that makes me more excited than a webinar like this. And that is a webinar like this that has polls. So let's get to a poll, shall we? So if you guys could, up on the screen, poll number one, what stage of reopening are you in? Are you fully open, partially open, expecting in the fall, maybe to reopen in 2021? Just if you could click up on the screen, what stage of reopening are you in? We'll leave this up for another 15 seconds. And Ari, as we're, as we're thinking about this, you know, I know that one of the things that you really want to focus in on now is that returning to the workplace model and what companies are currently doing and what they might have to focus on as well down the road. So the poll results are in. All right, 50% are fully open, 25% are partially, and then I've got to mix around the whole thing, right? A couple of remotes, a couple of hybrids, a couple of openings in 2021. So a little all over the board, Ari, it's a little all over the board. So I think it's good that you're gonna talk a little bit about all these different scenarios and all of these different considerations when it comes to going back to work. Yeah, this is that's a great tee up, Doug, and it's it is interesting to see kind of the different stages that we're in, and and we're seeing that variation too across the businesses that that, that we're working with, and it's it's interesting because terms like returning to the workplace and reopening represent really a, a complex set of considerations, right? So we're starting to see things in workplaces that we've never seen before. Um, and we probably will be seeing them for a while and a surprise, you know, probably none of us, um, if even, you know, we were to encounter this again um, in, our, in our lifetimes. And we didn't expect it before, but, you know, I think, uh, you know, it, it's something that, that, that now is on our radar, um, obviously. And so, um, you know, it, it, some of the things we're talking about, right? So we're talking about fewer people, obviously, in the workplace, um, temperature checks, health attestations on a daily basis that really serve as um, a worker's admission ticket to whether or not they can come into the office or not. Um, traffic directions in the office that dictate where you should work to help with, with distancing. In bigger offices, we're also seeing entire hallways dedicated to, um, to only one-way foot traffic. Um, and of course, the, the joys of the packed conference room may not come back for a while either. So I'm um, not sure if this is something that we will really miss too much, but um, it is something to behold when you see capacity limits and meeting spaces and, um, you know, instead of cookies, drinks and, and whiteboard markers on hands, you see more hand sanitizers um, and, and wipes. So it's definitely a, a different workplace and, and to get there, um, there's a new set of considerations and challenges. So let's let's talk about these and, and, and kind of go through it because it takes planning and work to even get to the point where you have people in the workplace to experience these, these kinds of, of changes. And you need to evaluate the policies, procedures, processes, tools. Um, and then, so these are some of the considerations and challenges that we're working with today with, with our clients. Um, in the area of workplace safety and security, workers obviously want to feel okay with being in the workplace. So distancing, cleanliness, sanitation, these are all table stakes now. Um, and then there's considerations around how, how to handle things like people returning from leave, um, and it could be sick leave or a furlough, and what to do if schools or, or childcare services are um, unexpectedly closed. Um, and if someone does test positive, can you trace back who they may have come in contact with in, in the workplace? So these are all new things. Um, policies and procedures. So are you communicating guidelines around the new behaviors expected from workers? Do they need to take a test before returning? Um, what are the policies around taking time off or, or leaves if, if they're needed also? Um, and of course, compliance comes into play. So in addition to understanding and complying with business as usual regulations prior to the pandemic, um, there's new COVID-19 related laws that you need to take into consideration and make sure you have the ability to, to follow them and then communicate them. And, and Doug, I mean, reopening certainly um, is tricky business. 
Yeah, it's absolutely tricky business. I think about like all of the different things that go into it. Like, are they willing to come back? Like our customers really willing to come back and, 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 and are they, do they have an appetite for it? Right. What should we do when we resume and who's available to work? Like all of these things Ari, are just really tough to really get a handle on. So I think, you know, what we should do is probably take another poll. I think that's what I'd like to do. What about you? Sounds good. All right, cool. So what is your current comfort level with returning to the workplace? So I think about me, right? Like right now, is it not comfortable, somewhat comfortable, comfortable, depends on the safety strategies, measures, and policies. I think about my everyday life, Ari, and just like, you know, I'm lucky enough to uh, work for ADT and I've worked from home for a long time. So there was not a lot of shift for me, but I think about just even like going out to a restaurant and eating outdoors and are they adhering to safety and going shopping and doing all those things. So I think a lot of people are wired a little bit like me that they're thinking about not just returning to work, but everything that they do. And then that kind of circles back to, do I feel safe going back to my workplace? So I think it's all part and parcel. Let's see those results in the poll. All right, so 44% not comfortable, right, as the, over, from, as the overriding factor of not being comfortable. Some are somewhat comfortable and some are comfortable. Okay, good to have those poll results. Good to have those poll results. So Ari, tell me a little bit more about what we should be thinking about when we're taking action with these new capabilities. Yeah, so, so it, it's, it's one thing to have an understanding of the key questions to ask yourself, right? And um, it's another thing to really set your company up to, to have the, the operational capability and, and some tools in, in place here. And so that's what we're gonna, we're gonna walk through now in terms of some of the existing tools that we have and then also some, some newer ones. Um, and then Kristen's gonna do a bit of a show and tell too. So uh, going back to the first phase of React again, right? So this is the world under lockdown, companies either paused operations or shifted to work from home. Um, governments around the world took action to provide relief, right? And so in, in doing so, they enacted new relief regulations such as uh, the FFCRA and CARES Acts. Um, and it, it required companies like ADP to rapidly deploy product updates um, to enable our clients to, to react, right? And so our teams released new earning co earnings codes in our systems, new reports, new APIs, dashboards, embedded logic um, into our systems that would enable um, everyone from sole proprietors to multi-billion dollar companies to um, react to this new um, re legislation and, and, and requirements. Um, and so, you know, within three days of the CARES Act passing, for example, we had small business PVP loan reports live and, and the 401k opt out options available. Um, since April, um, up to about 415,000 clients have, have run over 3 million reports for loan applications. Um, and we, we estimate that the potential value of these PPP reports um, is, is beyond $115 billion, billion through um, our clients just here at ADP alone. Um, and we've seen about 220,000 unique loan forgiveness reports also run in the second phase across the uh, reports that we've made available. And those are gonna continue to, to rise over time as, as the loan forgiveness um, continues. Um, also, we've, we've released some special earnings um, uh, codes for the FFCRA um, and a, a, a earnings tax credit dashboard. So a tool that helps clients estimate the value um, that, that, that they can, how, how they can leverage the wages and health expense memo codes um, in the regulations in order to better utilize the tax credits that they're eligible for. Um, and then in addition to federal laws, of course, the state and local agencies have been releasing guidance that we're also um, following and then pulling those into the systems as well. And then um, making that information available up on the, the ADP websites that we mentioned earlier. Um, outside the US too, we've, we have multiple country teams addressing um, over 2000 feature changes um, resulting from global and, and local legislation um, as well. So, I mean, ultimately, the goal has been to ensure that, that we're supporting our clients in the best way possible through this um, crisis. 
And now we're going to shift the talk over to preparedness um, and do a show and tell some of the tools that are helping clients with the process. But before we do that, we're going to do one last poll with Doug. Whew, I thought I, I, I needed a third poll. All right. I really needed a third poll. So how prepared do you feel your organization is for a full reopen with teams working in the office or on site? So are they well prepared? Do they need some more prep? Won't go back to an office environment in the near future. You're already back and it's fine or it's never been closed. So how prepared do you feel your organization is for a full reopening with teams working in the office? All right, let's take a look at those results, Ari. Okay, so a little bit, little bit all over the board again, right? Like, and this is, this is good. This is why we're having this dialogue, right? If everybody was, was answering well prepared, uh, it'd be kudos, right? But I think that as everything shifts and everything changes, it's going to be tough to always be 100% well prepared. So thank you for answering all these polls. I really appreciate it. Hey, before we get to Kristen and we get into the tool, rather right, just give a little bit of highlight, Ari. I think that we have the, the workforce now, the, the, the Beyond the Curve toolkit that we wanted to highlight real quick. Yeah, that's right. So, so as businesses are, are returning to work, and obviously some have already done so, right? Um, we've been working with our clients to help them navigate that that safe return. And and you know, as as we've said, it's a brand new world. Um, it requires new tools that didn't really previously exist to help facilitate these new processes that companies and and also their workers need, right? So from communication to scheduling and, and attestations to managing on-site employees. And so this is also augmented by touchless clocking um, for our workforce management products. Um, and businesses also need reporting and analytics to collect and visualize the data and trends so that they can make more informed decisions. And so rather than talk about this in terms of, of concepts, Kristen um, is now going to walk us through a demo to bring this to life. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ari. Bear with me for one moment. All oh, right. So this should be coming up in just a moment. Can everybody see the screen I just brought up? I will yeah, that looks great. Yeah. Looks great. Thanks, Doug. I realized realized that everybody else is probably on mute, so that was a silly question to ask. But uh, you know, I, I think Ari and Doug have brought up a lot of great conversation points and just things that uh, businesses as a whole, not only ADP, but all of you on the phone today are consistently thinking about. So uh, to Ari's point, we want to be able to kind of walk you through what some of the technology and tools that ADP is deploying to their existing clients today to help make this return to work, this you know transition back into whatever this new normal is uh, a little bit more uh, a little bit more efficient and a little bit easier to uh, handle. So we'll walk through this example. This is an employer who uh, has maybe multiple work locations and they've had to shut down. So like, I know that there's a good amount of you that have already started to reopen, but I imagine that based upon the polls that we saw, there's a few different individuals at least that have had some experience of at least partial shutdown. Uh, so in this example, what our group is going to want to do is actually begin the process of reopening some of those locations and bringing their employees back into work. So what we're looking at here is the return to work dashboard, which is going to be within the ADP workforce now system. And this is going to allow that HR practitioner or whoever is responsible within the organization to have access into this return to workplace tool. The first step of this is going to be that as a practitioner, you might want to take a survey to see, first of all, of your employees, who's available to come back to work in person. So in order to actually do this, they're going to first be able to select individuals, and in this case, we'll do it based upon a specific work location in both Florida and North Carolina. Uh, you can filter not only by location, but other criteria as well, so that you can then also apply different tags on top of those employees uh, so that it will enable you to not only track them initially, but continue to monitor those employees in the future. So we'll go ahead and select those two work locations. And then as an example as well, we're going to want to make sure not only that we select those employees, but that we're actually going to tag those individuals that are in those two populations with what we're going to designate as that return of the wave one. So that's going to enable us to see exactly who we've anticipated coming back in that first wave, but also then report on this at a later point. 
once you've selected and tagged those individuals, the next piece of this as a practitioner is that you're going to be able to actually send out a survey to those specific employees. You're going to be able to send that out, and as a practitioner, you'll be able to actually preview that survey, as you'll see here in the center of the screen, to confirm it looks correct. And what happens then is as you send this out, that employee is going to get a notification through their ADP mobile app. It'll populate directly up like you see here. And what will happen is they'll be able to log directly into that ADP app. And the first thing that they're prompted with is asking if they're available to work in person. You'll see here at the bottom, yes or no. If they answer no, uh, the employee is going to have the option to provide a reason why they may not be available. For example, maybe they don't have childcare or transportation at this point, all of those different items that Ari and Doug had covered earlier on in our conversation today. Uh, but this is not a required step for the employee, so just keep that in mind. In this case, the, in this example, this employee is in fact able to return to work and they are available to do so. So the next piece of the survey is gonna be how they're feeling about returning. We already did a few polls with you all today in the audience, and it's gonna be a very similar feel where it's a three option uh, survey that enables that person to either indicate if they're confident, somewhat nervous, or a bit anxious and unsafe about returning. In this case, we're gonna indicate this person feels safe about returning, and they are going to have that answer recorded, and that person, that practitioner, can then uh, have that on file for going forward. Now, as we continue to push those different surveys out to their employees, we wanna be able to track this information. So as employees start responding to the availability, availability survey on their mobile device, the practitioner, as you're gonna see here, will see that information come in from the survey, and they're gonna be able to see a number of different items. They're gonna be able to see who's actually responded, how many people are actually available to return to work, and then also how they feel about returning to work, as we see in, in that little sentiment with those different smiley faces. For those employees who have not responded to the survey, the practitioner, as you see on the right-hand side, is going to have the ability to actually send out another notification or reminder for that employee to go ahead and uh, fill out that survey prior to them being assigned to come back to work. Now, as we go through, and at this point, the practitioners collected a lot of those survey responses, and they may not be ready to assign some employees a day to actually begin returning to the workplace in person. So the first thing we'll be able to do here is actually indicate which of those employees they had tagged as that return wave one in this case. And then what they'll be able to do is actually assign them out a date. So we've pulled out the tags of return wave one. We want to select those individuals. And now from here, we want to actually assign them a return date. In this case, we'll say September 1st. As we assign those individuals, that person is going to be notified that they have successfully assigned those individual employees. And you'll notice that not only is their status uh, indicated as return to work, but also the return date is now showing that September 1st, as we had indicated. Okay. Now, once that employee is assigned to return to work, the day before their first day back at the workplace, they're actually going to get a push notification that's going to look very similar to what we saw in the first survey, but it's going to notify that person that they have been scheduled, and it's going to prompt them to actually come back into the ADP mobile app and then answer some similar questions to understand um, how they feel prior to coming in. As you'll see here, this is a very similar view as to what we saw in the initial survey, but the key here is that this sentiment could change day to day. So in this case, uh, as opposed to the first time that person filled out the survey, now that that day is coming up and it's tomorrow, this person may feel somewhat nervous that they are coming back on site and they're coming back in person. Once they indicate how they're feeling, they're going to be prompted with five statements that attest to whether they have symptoms of COVID-19 or if they've come in contact with somebody who has tested positive or has uh, symptoms potentially. The employee is going to be able to select a response to the attestation, as you see at the bottom, and then that answer is going to be recorded in the system. Coming back into that administrative dashboard, as employees are returning to uh, the workplace, the practitioner is not only going to be able to see that initial availability survey, but we see that second graph that enables us to understand uh, the metrics dashboard to see daily attestation responses, indicating how many employees have submitted their daily attestation and how many employees have not yet attested. The metrics are going to show how many employees are reporting that have not had any symptoms of COVID-19 or that may have had symptoms or have been in contact with someone who has. The practitioner can also see the attestation trends, as you'll see here at the bottom. So these are going to show trends of employees who are actively reporting to the workplace. And over time, the practitioner is going to have access to trend graphs for all of the survey responses so they can see how these trends may be changing for their workforce. Now, in the event that an employer receives the, uh, a report that an employee perhaps has tested positive, you're going to be able to go ahead and utilize this tool uh, to perform contact tracing to see which employees may have come in contact with that person in the workplace. 
So we'll be able to indicate here that in the weeks of September 15th through the 22nd, we want to indicate where that person, these two different locations, um, and where that person may have uh, come in contact with. We'll see here at the top, we can go ahead and trace those contacts, and it returns to us that there are nine potential employees that uh, Casey Martinez may have potentially come in contact with. This enables us to see that list of employees uh, who have returned on or before the selected date and again may have come in contact with that person. They can then select that group of employees and actually indicate or mark them as restricted. Now, if they want to re restrict them, what that's really indicating is that they would not be eligible to come back to work in person. And the purpose of actually marking them as restricted, of course, is not only to perhaps remove them from that on-site work, but also make sure that we can report off of that at a later point. Uh, the practitioner then can confirm um, once their uh, restricted status is in place, as you'll see here, that that restricted uh, status has been updated and no longer is there a return to date uh, uh, view in that dashboard that we saw previously. At some point in the future, that person may want to go through and uh, reach back out to these employees to find if they are available to come to work, which they can easily do here. They can select those individuals and send out that same survey. But at the end of the day, the goal of this return to work dashboard is to really give you as practitioners uh, the ability to identify employee availability and overall wellness and sentiment trends. And they'll, you'll also be able to see how the trends may change if people become more or less confident or less anxious potentially about returning to work. Over time, additional enhancements will continue to be made to these features as both Ari and Doug have been speaking about throughout the conversation. Uh, and by using ADP's connected abilities, uh, you're going to be able to make informed decisions as you continue to manage your return to workplace process. I'll talk again about that website we talked about earlier on, that adp.com backslash forward. Um, so it'll enable you to go ahead and just have ongoing information, not just with that return to work uh, dashboarding capability. Now, a few other components that uh, Ari and Doug had uh, touched upon in the previous part of our conversation were some of the enhancements around uh, different time collection options. So as you'll see here with the ADP time kiosk, this enables you to do full uh, touchless clocking in and clocking out uh, by utilizing not only the biometric scan as you saw here on that demo, but also the voice recognition so that that person truly does not have to touch the actual device in order to start and end their day. Okay. Now, to lastly, to close out our conversation, we really wanted to highlight some of those different areas that uh, we had touched upon up front in the conversation about what ongoing different uh, tools are available within the Workforce Now and EDP solutions to keep our clients continuously informed. You'll notice at the top of the screen, there's that little orange button that says COVID-19 updates. This is consistently updated. I think it was Doug who said before how often things are changing. Uh, you'll see here, this was just uh, 13 days ago when we had the update to the employee payroll tax deferral. We're keeping you consistently involved and up to date with all the legislative updates that do occur. You're gonna be able to link into the actual tax deferral setups and understand more about the different components and the potential impact to setting up something like a tax deferral uh, on your employees and your business going forward. And we're providing you the different resources that may be needed, whether it is that information about um, the, the employee preparedness, employer preparedness toolkit that we talked about earlier, or additional legislation updates that are continuously thrown out to the organizations that we, we process uh, through the Ion Washington newsletter. In addition to that, you are going to have full access into those different dashboards that we alluded to earlier, uh, one of which is that COVID-19 dashboard. So it's really twofold. It's going to help you identify the potential impact based upon John Hopkins University's daily update of where COVID-19 cases have uh, hit uh, more or less throughout the, uh, the, the day, uh, being able to understand where that information is and where that may impact your work uh, based upon the locations that your organizations actually uh, operate in. So it's really twofold. You'll have this tool to not only be able to uh, see that information as far as where you have current footprints, but also be able to overlay a data mashup tool to understand what you had anticipated as far as people coming back to work, individuals that are perhaps out on leave based upon a need to take care of a loved one or because they perhaps have come down with COVID-19 themselves. This is going to give you that full flexibility and access to understand those daily cases versus where you might have headcount in place. In addition to that, uh, Ari had also talked about before uh, some of the other dashboards and storyboards that are going to be tied in directly to the COVID-19 impact. And that's going to be uh, helping our clients understand whether or not they are eligible for any of the CARES Act, excuse me, CARES Act, pardon me, uh, credit 
they'll be able to go ahead and actually walk through a very easy to follow storyboard to understand if they are eligible for this employee retention credit. So it's not enough to just give you the data points. We're really guiding you through as an organization how you may be considered an eligible employer, do you have qualified wages, and ultimately how do you go ahead and claim those credits. Our goal is to really be consultative with this and give you the tools and different components that you may need in order to make an actionable decision. We hope today's uh, demonstration was useful. Uh, we'll provide to you that additional information after today's call. Again, adp.com backslash forward. Um, it has a lot of information, just will keep you up to date ongoing about all updates, not only as it regards to ADP technology, but also just ongoing legislative updates as well. So thank you so much. And we'll go ahead and pass that back to Ari to close this out with today's conversation. Thanks, Rick. This is Nathan Triplett. I'll jump back in here. Uh, we're going to have a little session for q and A. I've got a couple questions along the way, um, but for anybody else that does want to submit them, please um, just go to the chat box and the GoToMeeting um, user interface and the chat over to us, and we'll read your question out and answer it to the very best of our ability. So, um, the first question that came through is, um, what is ADP doing in regards to the new employee tax deferral? Yeah, so this is this is Ari. I can I can take that one. Um, so this is a, a, another example of uh, you know recent changes from a regulatory and legislative standpoint that require really quick um, quick changes, and then you know also from a technology um, standpoint too, so that um, companies can either opt in or opt out of deferring taxes based on the latest guidance from the government. And when this came down um, on a Friday that, that, you know, next Monday we were ready in terms of um, answers for our clients. Um, we've updated our, our systems to allow for the businesses to um, opt in of the deferral and then to also manage it and, and change it um, really uh, on their own. Um, and then we've also created a, a dedicated microsite um, for the employee social security tax deferral. Um, and we can share that as a resource and, and some of the follow-up information as well. So um, it's it's something that, you know, as as this pandemic continues to unfold, um, we all need to adapt and 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 build capabilities into the the products and the technology so that businesses can can easily um, accommodate it with, with, with confidence. Perfect. Thank you, Ari. All right. I see another question that's come in. Where can we find a similar demonstration of that dashboard daily attestation, easy for me to say, thing from ADP? Is it a standalone product or part of a package level? Um, so I can answer the first piece of that in terms of the, an additional demo or deeper demo. Um, if you just want to click to the next slide, this is Nathan Triplett, you can contact me. I can help coordinate that. Um, in terms of it being um, standalone and part of a package level, um, Ari or um, Kristen, Doug, is that something that you can address for us? Yeah, this is Kristen. I'll jump in there. Um, it is part of the offering. Uh, so if you're, you're leveraging the HR capabilities of the platform, that's going to be something that is inherent to the offering. Perfect. All right. And I see another question about additional demos. Um, again, use my contact information here. Um, another question that's come in. What do you see as the biggest barrier to returning to work and how does ADP address it? Good question. Yeah, this is this is Ari. I can I can certainly take take a stab at that one. Um, you know, I think it barriers in terms of returning to work, um, it's it's really twofold, right? I think there's the you know, being able to have the right safety protocols in place um, in the office, right? And the policies as well, so that people feel confident to return and that they, they feel okay in terms of, okay, if I come into the workplace, 
Um, there's the right social distancing in place or the cleanliness and sanitation, and they're not going to be um, put further at risk to the point where they may not be comfortable, right? And I think the, the second piece is um, understanding how they feel about it and their sentiments and really being able to capture information around who is ready to return. Um, you know, there may be folks that have childcare um, constraints, right? So they've got young kids at home, um, they may not have school or childcare open and they have to take care of those kids at home. And so they have to continue to work remotely and juggle that for a period of time. Um, and so you need to capture that information and then off of that have visibility into that data across your your people your and your workforce um, to say okay do we have enough um, folks who are available to perform perform certain tasks or to be on a certain shift um, and how does it look across departments and locations and so to be able to have that visibility into both sentiment in terms of how people are feeling about returning um, if they're okay, if they're nervous, if if um, you know they're not willing to come back, um, and then also um, you know looking at it by by job role, tie, title, and task, because all of that is going to impact um, your business. So, what kind of products you can produce, what kind of services you can deliver, um, and then what you can accomplish remotely versus having people there in the in the office. So, those are those are really the 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 biggest barriers and. And there has not been a blueprint in the past either. And so, you know, we're all working through this um, together. And, you know, we've, we've been learning a lot from our clients along the way to help inform um, what, what we're doing. And, and we're also learning um, in terms of how we're managing our own offices and our own workplaces um, and, and using that to, to inform, you know, um, also how we're going to help our clients there. Great, thank you, Ari. I don't see any additional questions at this point. Um, so we'll just share Ari, Doug, Kristen, you know, thank you for the time, the information that you shared, and really being able to connect the dots between you know, some of the strategies that we have and what we're doing within the technology. I hope the group found it to be helpful. Um, if anyone attending has questions regarding the content, there's things you didn't see, you didn't want to bring a question to chat, but still have questions. My contact information is here. Feel free to reach out to me. If you're a current ADP customer looking to take advantage of what we covered today, we can make sure you get in touch with the right resources to help you. So again, we appreciate your time. We hope it's helpful. We look forward to your feedback. Um, and thanks and join us soon. Take care, folks.